thank you, God, for your visitation with us this morning. We're going to allow our kids to be released to Sprouts. Thank you, Mandy and Christopher, your giftings, your talents, your anointing. You may have your seats. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time. We thank you for your visitation and your presence among us this morning, Father. God, as we get ready to hear your word and to receive your word, Father, I pray right now, God, that you speak to me, God. Speak through me, Lord God. Let me only speak that which you have given me, God. Let me speak with clarity and simplicity, God, that your word may go forward to reach its intended target. It is in the master's name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm so excited this morning to be before you, and I'm, I'm It's been a while since I've been up. We've had some amazing speakers and guest preachers in in 2023, and so I'm excited to be back before you. So, uh, Avery, go ahead and set my clock for two hours and 15 minutes. No, I'm not going to be before you long, but I have a question for you this morning. I have a serious question for you. Do you want to hear a message this morning, or do you want to change your life? Do you want to hear a message, or do you want to change your life? So if you want to change your life this morning, today is the day for you. We are starting a brand new series called Knowing and Flowing with the Holy Spirit. Anybody heard of the Holy Spirit before? The Holy Ghost before? You know, now we've gotten sophisticated in our ways and we say the Holy Spirit. The Bible does say the Holy Ghost. And we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. And the Holy Spirit is such a vital part of our walk and our Christian journey. As a matter of fact, I would submit to you that we are unable to live our best life without the Holy Spirit. Because you know that's the term right now. When you're doing your thing, you out there living your best life. You can't live your best life without the Holy Spirit. Why do you say that? Say, Pastor, why do you say you can't live your life without the Holy Ghost? Because he's vital. Let's look at the book of Acts, which deals with the early church and Jesus' disciples. The Holy Spirit was such a vital part of their life. They depended upon the Holy Spirit. They referred to the Holy Spirit. They deferred to the Holy Spirit. So let's take it to the Word and see what the Word has to say about it. And I'm going to run through these scriptures really quickly. Maybe you can jot them down and go read them in your time. Acts 5.32, and we are witness of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost. I didn't write it. It was in the Bible. Next slide. Acts 11 and 12. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But it said the Spirit had told me to have no hesitation. I know some of y'all know a little bit about that when the Holy Spirit's telling you to do something and you're hesitant to do it. Next slide. Acts 11, 28, one of them named Agabus stood up and indicated by the Spirit that there would definitely be a a severe famine all over the world. Next slide. Acts 13 and 4. So Barnabas and Saul were sent out by the Holy Spirit. When you hear the Holy Spirit speak and he tells you to go, go. Next slide. Acts 15 and 28. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to place you on any greater burden than these essentials. Next slide. Acts 16 and 6, now they had gone through Phagaria and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Oh, what does it say? Forbidden. When you're about to go to that place that you know you're not supposed to go, when you're about to dial that number that you know you're not supposed to dial, it says that the Holy Ghost, that's not, that's not just some little feeling. That's the Holy Spirit telling you, I, 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 don't do it. Next slide. And after they came to Myasia, they were trying to go into Bithynia, and the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. Don't do it. Next slide. I think we got a couple more. 
Acts 8, uh, 19 and 2 says, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? No, they replied, we have not yet heard that there's a Holy Spirit. There are many people out there who don't have any idea who the Holy Spirit is. And I think this is the last slide. Except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city. The Holy Spirit testifies in the early city. Did y'all see how much they talked about the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts? And I, I had a longer list, but I said, let me, let me cut it short. Unfortunately, we don't hear that much in our churches today. We hear a lot about Father, Father God, and we hear a lot about Jesus, but we don't hear as much about the Holy Spirit. I mean, I wonder why that is. I'm not sure, but I'm going to make some upfront statements here. Without the Holy Spirit, Christianity becomes mundane, monotonous, monotonous and dry. Remove the Holy Spirit from the church and it will morph into a social club or a religious institution. There is no love without the Holy Spirit. There is no revelation without the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, Scripture itself becomes lethal without the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about? What do you mean Scripture becomes lethal? In 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, uh, uh, third chapter, sixth verse, in the Amplified Bible, it talks about being able to minister under the letter, the letter, which is written code. Well, the letter actually kills the Spirit gives life. Sometimes we want to follow the, the letter of the law, but the Spirit gives life. In fact, God came to do away with the law anyway, to fulfill the law. There is no joy without the Holy Spirit. There is no peace without the Holy Spirit. There is no freedom without the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians uh, the third chapter, 17 verse to amplify, it says this. It says, now the, the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. We, we often heard, or there is freedom. Hmm. That scripture kind of is a little bit, I don't want to say it's off, but it's kind of hard to understand that. Why? Why? Because the Holy Spirit, the triune God is everywhere. He's omnipotent. He's all, he's everywhere at the same time and says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty guess what every place the spirit is not allowed to be lord where the spirit is it should i'll paraphrase it not that it should where the spirit is lord is the spirit lord in your life is the Spirit Lord in your home? Is the Spirit Lord in your car? Is the Spirit Lord at your job? Where the Spirit of the Spirit is Lord, there is freedom. So the purpose of today's message is to introduce you to the person of the Holy Spirit. There is so much that I could talk to you about the Holy Spirit, and I wouldn't even be able to scratch the scratch. I, I don't know if it's going to be four weeks, six weeks. I, I don't even know. As a matter of fact, I'm, me and Pastor Pearl, she's back in children's church, y'all, and, man, she's right in the midst of her, you know, finishing up that last class. She just finished her, just finished her midterms. By the way, I'm, I'm a little shout-out. We were on travel last week. My daughter graduated from um, the Air Force Basic Training Academy in San Antonio, Texas. She's now in Mississippi. But Pastor Pearl had to do her, her midterm exam while we were traveling. It was due on Tuesday. We're traveling and everything. She couldn't get it done. So she asked, hey, can I get an extension? Professor gave her an extension. She did it. She was, she was exasperated. She was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. When she got her grade, y'all, she got a 98, y'all. <laughs> she got a 98. She got a 98. And I, I've been trying to kind of take some of the weight off her. She did a lot this morning. She did the welcome. She did, you know, introduce Crystal, did that. She's now working Sprouts, y'all. So shout out to Pastor Pearl. But if I wanted to talk to you about Pastor Pearl, and we've been married for 19 years, I couldn't do it in, 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 in one week, in four weeks, in six weeks. As a matter of fact, I'm still getting to know her. I hear all the time when, when y'all folks come, we go out to dinner, she tells a new story. I'm like, I ain't never heard that story. I ain't never heard that before. Anyway, today's purpose is to introduce the Holy, you to the person of the Holy Spirit. Three in one. The title of my message is three in one. Really? Three in one. 
One of the big mistakes people, Christians, not people, Christians make is they attempt to study the work of the Holy Spirit without first knowing who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Ghost is a person. Not Casper the Ghost, but the Holy Ghost. He's a person. In fact, we often, if, 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 if I had money, and I know uh, uh, Rebecca could, could attest to this, if, I had, if we had a dollar for every time we heard somebody call the Holy Spirit an it, we might have a little bit of change, y'all. The Holy Spirit is not an it. But before we jump into the deep waters about the Holy Spirit, I feel like it's important to go back to the beginning. What do you mean? In society today, we live in a time where humanity is large and God is small. We live in a society today where man is the measure of all things. We live in a society today, it's a, it's a do you culture. Even, I've even heard this in the church, do you, baby. You want to come to church? Do you. You don't want to come to church? Do you. And you know what? It wasn't always this way, but it is the reality of the day and unfortunately, reality exerts a pervasive and powerful influence over us. Who is God? What is God? And why is there a God? The greatest need of the believers, we need to make sure that we understand our thought process and, and, re- and recover, restore, redeem our right view of who God is. Let's start with the Trinity. Anybody ever heard that word? The Trinity. Anybody ever heard the word the Godhead? Trinity means a group of three, people or things. But we're talking about the Holy Trinity or the Godhead. What is the Godhead? Trinity is the theological term applied to God to indicate his perpetual existence as three distinct persons, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are all one indivisible God. To be honest with you, the concept of a triune God is more than difficult to comprehend. It's actually impossible to comprehend. My brother is Muslim, and we often have conversations about Christianity and about the Muslim faith, Islamic faith, and one of the things he really just couldn't get, I can't get with this three-in-one. I I don't understand this three-in-one. So it's truly difficult to comprehend with our human mind, with our finite mind, understand that God is infinite. You actually got to take it based upon faith. There's really no corresponding example in the earth. Humans who are the most complex creatures on earth exist as single persons and not as unified multiples. So one of the most popular and simple illustrations of the Trinity is the egg, is the egg. You've got the shell. Let me see if I can do this with my skills. <laughs> you've got the white. And you've got the yolk. If you see this by itself, what would you call this? What would most people call this? It's an egg. We probably would call this, I don't know what that is. Egg white, and if you see the shell, it's an egg. This is an example of the Godhead. But guess what? This example really falls short. It really does fall short because God cannot be divided into parts, y'all. God, you have the Father, you have the Son, and you have the Spirit. They are all one existence. But the same cannot be said for the shell, the egg white, and the yolk. They're all three distinct things. God is one. So now that we've gone back to the basics, let's move forward to talk about the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit is not simply an add-on for our Christian life. It's not something that we a la carte, I got the Father, I got the Son, should I get a little bit of this Holy Spirit? It's not an add-on. It is a vital part of our walk. The Holy Spirit is not merely a force or a powerful influence, but the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity and should be, or should I say more correctly, related to personally personally it is the responsibility of the spirit and i'm not going to today i'm not going to get into the works and the things that he does because that's a whole piece by itself but the general responsibility of the spirit is to bring the light to bring to bring to life the presence and the power of godhead starting from creation throughout the life of a believer it's to bring the power and the presence of god here on earth let me give you an example of what this looks like. Can someone name some, we, we got a microwave that's out. Can anybody name some, some good brands of appliances? GE. I thought Samsung, but my microwave, just, it just blew up. It just, it, I mean, literally, Cabo pushed the button and it just stopped working. The maintenance man came to fix it. He fixed it. He changed the fuse. He pushed the button. It blew up again. I love Samsung, but I didn't get an, I'm not getting another Samsung microwave. So I heard GE, I heard Samsung. Any others? Whirlpool. Bosch. Okay, I didn't, okay, Bosch. Guess what? Sounds great. All these are great, great appliances. But guess what? If they sit on the, on the counter or if they're under the stove or if they're over here, if there's no electricity, they won't work. They look good. They got all the flash stainless steel, but if there's no electricity, they won't work. Electricity allows them to be to function as they were designed. What about the Christian? If we don't have the Holy Spirit, can we operate the way God has called us to operate? Are we able to move and have the being the way God has called us to have our being without the Holy Spirit? He's not an add-on. He's an essential part of his life. So much to so when we became saved, we got the Holy Spirit on the inside. We got the Holy Spirit on the inside. It's one thing to get a brand new credit card and it's got a, a, a $10,000 limit and it's in your wallet. But if you don't activate it, guess what? You can't use it. You're authorized to use it, but with no activation, you cannot use it. It's the same way with the Holy Spirit. How do I know the Holy Spirit is important. The Holy Spirit actually shows up on the scene in verse 2. Verse 2 of what? Verse 2 of Genesis. Genesis what? What is Genesis? It's the first book of the Bible. What does it say in Genesis 1 and 2? What does it say? What does it say? It says, I'll start at 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Man, he's right here at the very beginning of time. He's right there. The Holy Spirit is right there with God at the very beginning. It was funny. Uh, I I, I, got, I, got, I got a Bible, and I, I just came back from Dr. E, uh, Tony Evans' uh, conference in uh, Dallas, Texas for a week where they had leaders and pastors, and it was a blessed, a blessed time. But they had this uh, uh, game called the Bible game. It was kind of like Family Feud, so they had each pastor come up with their Bible. One of the young Thundercats, he walked up there with his iPad. They said, no, no, you need an actual paper Bible. And they basically went head to head the, the moderator named out a scripture, and they had to see how fast they could get to the scripture. You know, the one thing, go to Genesis 1, <laughs> you know, not with the iPad. So it was just interesting having, um, having the Bible. Nothing wrong with having an iPad or your phone, but it's something about hearing the pages turn. And, and mm, yeah, let me, let me move forward. So God spoke the word, which was Jesus. And the Spirit did what God spoke through his word. If we want to live a victorious Christian life, then it is critical that we understand the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And if you ever want to study doctrine and you want to study the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, you know, 
you're one of these Christian, Christianese and you want to be a scholar. The doctrine of the Holy Spirit is called pneumatology, which comes from the word or the name pneuma, the Greek word for breath or spirit. So even though the Holy Spirit is central to our Christian life, there is a lot of mystery around the third person of the Godhead. There is a, there's also a great deal of confusion. But let's start our study here with the foundation, one foundational New Testament passage for understanding the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was in the upper room and Jesus was giving his pregame speech. The original Coach Prime. It was the same night of the Last Supper and the, and the subsequent betrayal by Judas. In John, 14, six, John chapter 14, verses 16 and 7, Jesus says, and I'm going to read a couple of versions really quickly. King James says, I will pray for the Father, and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth within you and shall be within you. The Amplified Bible says it this way. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world can't receive and take to its heart because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because the Holy Spirit remains with you continually and will be in you. And then finally, the Message Bible. And this one starts at 15. If you love me, show it by doing what I told y'all. Parents, 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 parents. If you love me, do what I told you. We really say, but listen to what I got to say. I will talk to the Father and he will provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the spirit of truth. The godless world can't take him in because it doesn't have eyes to see him and doesn't know what to look for. But you know him already because he's been staying with you and will even be in you. Jesus assured his followers that even though he would leave, he would not be left. They would not be left alone. So let's just talk about the Holy Spirit being a person. What is a person? A person is someone that has personality. You ever met anybody that has no personality? Like, man, I ain't got no personality. But the Holy Spirit is a real person. How do we know he's a person and not just a force? Because he has all of the attributes of personality. The Holy Spirit has emotions. The Holy Spirit has intellect. The Holy Spirit has a will. He has all of these things. The Spirit's intellect is demonstrated by the fact that there are things that he knows with his mind. And I'm going to run through the scriptures, so just write them down. He, we know about his intellect because of Romans 8, 27. And I'm not going to go into the scripture just because of time. His emotions or feelings can be seen by the fact that he can be grieved. You ever heard that? You can grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 and 30. His will is seen in the fact that he knows he, and acts with intentionality or purpose. Um, that's 1 Corinthians 12 and 11. Only a person intends to do things. A few other traits of a person are as follows. They speak, the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit teaches. The Holy Spirit bears witness. The Holy Spirit forbids. We saw that in the scripture earlier. The Holy Spirit can be insulted. The Holy Spirit can be lied to. Let me tell you, I don't want to lie to the Holy Spirit. Y'all remember, anybody remember the story of uh, uh, um, Ananias and his, and his wife? He li lied to the Holy Spirit. If this was going on today, we would be in trouble. Lie to the Holy Spirit and drop dead. 
I understand the covenant of a uh, 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 man and, and a husband and wife. I understand the covenant between them. And she was trying to keep it real and, and follow after her husband. Yeah, guess what? God should never be put before your spouse. She went in there and said the same thing. I guess ain't nobody told her what happened to her husband. She went and said the same thing and she died. You can't lie to a force. You can't lie to an it. You can't lie to a power. You can't lie to an influence, but you can lie to a person. The Holy Spirit is a divine person. The Holy Spirit is God. He's equal with the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are of the same essence or substance, which the Greek, which is the Greek word alos. Come here, come on. They are not of like substance, but they are of, of the same substance. If I give you an apple and you eat that apple, and then Jesus said, I will give you another one. I'll give you another one. And then he used the word alos for another one of the same kind and of another kind. If I give you an orange, it's a fruit but it's one of another kind. That's not what Jesus was giving them. He was giving them one of the same kind, of the same essence. The Holy Spirit was the same as Jesus. As a matter of fact, Jesus told them that you will do greater works than these when I give you the same kind. Take those and have those for lunch. The Holy Spirit is a unique person. The, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the very breath or wind of God. And like the wind is who is invisible, the Spirit of God exhibits great power. Why does the world not know the Holy Spirit? For the same reason that you can't pick up radio signals without a radio. It doesn't matter whether, we, we don't need to talk about whether radio signals are going forward and, and are in the airways. If you don't have a radio, you don't have the means to pick up the signal. It's the same with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes into us when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died and he rose and he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. We know because we get that Holy Spirit in us then and that we are able to hear them. world does not have a spiritual receiver. But guess what? Jesus implanted a receiver within those who know him to pick up heaven's signal. So the believer can tune into the heavenly at any time to the very voice of God. So in the midst of discouragement, in the midst of fear, in the midst of loneliness, in the midst of insecurity, in the midst of sin, the believer can tune in to the Holy Spirit. And y'all know in Alabama, he can throw the hat up and the Holy Spirit is coming right on the scene. You don't got to worry about somebody swimming across the water. The Holy Spirit is right there to fight your battles. We don't have to throw the white hat. God is with us. God, the Holy Spirit, is with us at all times. I'm going to jump to the end here. I'll take you a little bit. The Holy Spirit is an enabler. He's a helper. The Holy Spirit is an internal helper. The Greek, for, the Greek word for Holy Spirit is paraclete. It's translated a, a bit different across different translations. One translation, it's, it's counselor. And another translation, it's advocate. What's an advocate? One that comes alongside to help. Chris is Crystal's advocate. He comes alongside to help. When it's tough, he comes alongside to help. Elder Barbara is an advocate. She leads our, our pastoral care. And every time she hears somebody's going through things, I don't even have to tell her. She's calling. She's texting. She's showing up on the doorstep with food. How'd you even get the address? The Holy Spirit gave it to me. The Holy Spirit is a helper like Jesus. He's a helper. He, the Holy Spirit is a divine and equal essence as Jesus himself. The Holy Spirit is an ever-present helper. 
in the time of need. He's, he's, he's present. He's always on the scene whenever you need him. Whenever you're by yourself, Crystal, and you're in that room and Chris is out of gig, like you said, and it's rough that day. Chemo was, was tough. You, you, you hurt yourself in the gym working out too hard because you don't know how to slow down. In that time when it's tough, he's an ever-present help in the very time of need. A very present help in the time of need. We see that Jesus made a promise to his disciples. Very key. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up now. He told them that I will not only leave you with principles, because Jesus came in the principles that he left, especially in the red linen. He was leaving them with principles. But he told them that he would give them power. Not just principles, but power. In the first chapter of Acts, in verse number four, Jesus tells his disciples, y'all, who have spent the last three years with him. They had intimate time with him. They ate with him. They were rebuked by him. They were corrected by him. They were taught by them, him. Jesus said to his disciples, y'all, I'm about to roll. I'm about to be up out of this piece. Jesus, yes, I just said, I'm outie. 5,000. But what did he say? This is, this is key. What did he say to the disciples? He said, I don't want you to do anything. I don't want you to go anywhere. I don't want you to do ministry. What do I want you to do? I want you to wait. I want you to wait. Stay in place and wait. Wait for what, Jesus? We got work to do. You sent us to turn the world upside down. Why do we have to wait? Because I want you to wait until you get what the Father has promised you. The Father has promised you that he shall send power and the ability when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Jesus knew that they would need power to accomplish all of the principles that he had. As a matter of fact, he knew that they needed not just education and information, but they needed power. Be honest with you, God's principles are hard to keep without the power. Love your enemies. Huh? You can't do that without his power. How about this one? How about this one? Pray for those who spitefully use you. What? I'm struggling with this one right now. I'm struggling. Giving, 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 giving. I'm all, you don't tell me until you need something. When you, you're always looking. God said to pray for I can't. I could, if it was in my own strength, I couldn't do it. I need his power to do it. I needed his power. See, God said, I want to give you more than hope. I want to give you help. I want to give you more than hope. I want to give you help, which is why he sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, though, and though I am the central part of the plan, I'm not the only part of the plan. The Father creates the Son redeems and the Spirit empowers. And he told the disciples, if you're going to live like me, you need, a, you need a little something else. If you're going to live like me, you need a little something else. Jesus is telling the disciples, if you want to be like me, then you need to have also what's on the inside of me. You see, Jesus had the Spirit in him. Because why? Because God is one. Let's just look at it as we, we wrap it up here. He told the disciples that you need a little something else. As I said in the beginning, the Spirit is vitally important. Let me show you. Jesus, our Jesus, was born by the Spirit. Jesus was baptized in the Spirit. When Jesus was baptized, the heavens opened up and, 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 and they descended, the dove descended upon him. And what did the Father say? This is my Son, whom I'm well pleased. What does that mean? His identity was affirmed when the Spirit was released. You get your identity from the Spirit. You can customize your calling through the Spirit. You can be who God called you to be through the Spirit. In Luke, it also says Jesus was full of the Spirit and was led 
by the Spirit into the wilderness. It starts, it was full of the Spirit, and then he was led by the Spirit. Can I submit something to you? You are always led by what you are full of. You are always led by what you are full of. Jesus was anointed by the Spirit. Gifts make us impress impressive. Anointing makes us impactful. And finally, 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 Jesus was resurrected by the Spirit. He didn't do it by himself. He was resurrected by the Spirit. And I'm going to put the scriptures out for these. I'm going to put them on our app. I'm going to put them out there so you can go and see it for yourself. But the Jesus had these things for the Spirit. So community, family, disciples, believers, I submit to you today, if Jesus was born by the Spirit, if he was baptized by the Spirit, if he was full of the Spirit, if he was led by the Spirit, if he was anointed by the Spirit, if he was resurrected by the Spirit, how much more do we need the Spirit, y'all? How much more do we need the Spirit moving and operating in our lives? We got to know the Spirit, and then we got to allow ourselves to flow with the Spirit. Stand to your feet. Father, we thank you this morning, God, for your time with us, God. We thank you, God, for your visitation, Lord God. We thank you, God, even from the beginning, Lord God, that your Father, you sent the Son. You sent the Son to die on the cross for us and to walk this walk on earth for us, God. But we're so thankful, God, that that wasn't it, Father. We're so thankful, Lord God, that when Jesus ascended, Lord God, that he also left a gift for us, God. He left a promise for us, God. He left the Holy Spirit, God, that we may move and have our being in you, Father. So if you want today, I never want to take anything for granted. If you don't have a heavenly receiver and you want to be able to tune in to what God wants to say to you as, as, as Brother Mark said earlier, to be still and know that I am God. But you, you're unable to hear. Today is a day that you can invite him into your heart and you'll immediately, immediately you get the receiver. You get to tune into him. So we want to pray this together for those who may not hear in the building or those watching online the opportunity to invite Jesus into your heart. And when you get Jesus, you also get the Holy Spirit. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your Son who died for my sins, who took the punishment I deserve that I may have life. I believe with my mouth, I believe with my, in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And I will serve him all the days of my life. If you pray that prayer, your spiritual receiver has been turned on. You're in the body of Christ. You're in the family. If you're online, even here, find, make sure that you find a Bible-believing church where you can go we like to talk about here at the place where you can grow, serve, and give to, to walk your Christian walk. Father, we thank you, God, this day, Father, for all that you called us to, God. Thank you for your visitation. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.